Welcome everybody to Let's Make Art. We had a way more chill intro. Yes. We get to change the moods every now and then, but uh, thank you so much for being here. We love to paint, we love to watercolor, and maybe this is your first time watercoloring. That's okay, it's not a big deal. I'm here for you. We take it slow. It's not scary, because it's just a piece of paper and water and paint, and those are just things. And we are painting the hedgehog tonight. Everybody, I'm yeah. I'm very excited about the hedgehog. Yeah, this one's super fun. You guys have been, uh, you guys are really great because you just, when the tutorials release, you guys just go and I love seeing everybody's different hedgehogs. They're super cute. They have so much personality and it's like people name them. It's really great. Didn't we name ours in the tutorial? Oh, if we did. I think we did. I think you did. I think it was like Maxwell or something like or Maxwell. Thomas. It was Thomas. Was that it? Yeah, Thomas, was, that's it. Okay, so at the end, we'll get to name ours at the end here. So we are using five colors. We have violet, azure blue, red rose, sepia. Okay, I was corrected that it was sepia last time, but I'm still not sure because I started saying sepia and then people are like, it's sepia. And I'm like, I don't know who to believe. So <laughs> maybe I could just look it Someone up on. Someone needs to get down to the bottom of the Somebody needs to figure this out. Maybe like copy and paste the pronunciation or something on the dictionary. Anyways, and then the last color is yellow ochre. Um, I know that we've had some exploding yellow ochre in our November box, but we switched lids for our December one. We have the droppers again. So hopefully that problem is solved. You guys are great. We were just trying something. Obviously it didn't work, so we switched back, but thank you for your patience. Let me introduce, this is Rob. He's in town doing some tutorials for man sewing, so I'm glad he was able to paint with us. And this is my dad, Lynn. He's in town helping us build a house. So, <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> and I've had many parents come on this show and you might be like, whoa, she has a lot of moms and dads. I do. I come from a <laughs> blended family, but we all get along. And so we just don't say step, we just say mom and dad and whatever, and it's a great time. No, that's great. Because we like each other. Um, we are using two brushes tonight. We are using a round six and a round two. Rob, I gave you a few different sizes. Just in case. <laughs> Just in case. Because you know I don't follow the instructions anyway. I'm like, I feel like Rob needs his own brushes. <laughs> Just shoot from the side of the table over and get away. <laughs> and we have Keenan. He's going to be that. I'm just in the background. That voice you hear. He also does the camera, so I'll yeah. talk to him every now and then. And um, we just have five steps for this painting. It's pretty basic. You guys just follow along and you'll do great. Step number one, we are going to do the face wash, which is color on the face. Hmm. Yep. Step two, we are going to do the shadows on the spikes here, so these dark parts. Step three, we're gonna blend all of it out using different colors, which is why we have some red and why we have some yellow and why we have some green. And then the fourth step, we are going to do like this furry part up here and the face, like the details of the face. And then step five is just those finishing. Keenan, step five. I'm pretty sure it's details. It's details. You did good. Thank you. Thank <laughs> if you watched the pre-recorded tutorial, I put him on the spot for that. And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so he's so good. Okay. So we are going to start off by tracing our hedgehog onto our paper. So in your kit, you should have a folded piece of graphite paper. It's in with your Let's Make Art Matter postcard. So sometimes people don't see it and then they get mad that it's not there. It's usually in there. So it's just a folded piece of graphite paper. It's totally reusable. So don't throw it out after a use, okay? It actually gets better over time because then the lines get a little bit uh, lighter. The graphite's not as dark, so keep it. Now, when you use graphite paper, what I like to do is I like to tape my outline onto my paper, and that way it doesn't move while I'm tracing, so it keeps its shape. And I just use painter's tape for that, just blue painter's tape. Or if you have Wasi tape, that would also work. And then I'm gonna put my graphite paper. Is there a right or wrong side? There is. So if you're gonna do dark side down onto your paper, because the dark side is the side that has the actual graphite on it. And then you put that in. Don't like press hard because you'll see any mark you make with a pen or a pencil or sometimes even a thumb is going to show up on your paper underneath. Uh, sorry, I was just looking at the volume. Is our volume okay? Some people are saying yeah. it's good. Our Some people are saying good. maybe not. Okay. So, 
And then you're just gonna go ahead and start tracing. Now you wanna do light lines. You wanna do light pressure because, and then this is why taping it is so nice. Usually I like to test the line and then I lift up and I see how dark it is on my paper. If I want it to be lighter, then I just am barely touching that pen onto this outline. So that's it. Oh, that's too light. Too light, I can't see it. Now I'm gonna do my, my outline a little bit darker so it's easier for you guys at home to see where I'm putting stuff. But if you're at home and you're, since you're on top of your paper and you can see it, try and do it as light as possible because watercolor is transparent. So you're gonna see all of those pencil mark, uh, marks through it. And now we're just going to do a million little lines onto our uh, paper. Now, if you're doing the outline, you, one thing you gotta keep in mind with these outlines is that um, they're not like set in stone, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you kind of draw it wonky or sometimes you miss an area. They're just general guidelines, especially with this one with the edges. It's gonna be really loose brush strokes, so don't focus too much on the outline, especially on this bottom ball part on the bottom because we're just gonna be doing loose brush strokes, like, you know, you'll see. So um, don't stress, just kinda, if anything, just kinda give yourself a general idea of where you want your hedgehog to end. So we got, we got a lot of little lines in here. So you guys, you know, just be patient. I see that some people have been getting the December box already, which is awesome. Um, we're really excited for that box. There's a lot of fun projects in there. If you haven't received your box yet, just be patient. We're, we're working on it, but we've had the combination of Black Friday and the Thanksgiving holiday and a blizzard a legit blizzard that I am told never happens in Missouri, but I just feel like I'm experiencing all of these crazy weather conditions. First time things keep happening over <laughs> yeah. and over again. Every time yeah. I come out, there's another thing. That's, that what, I'm That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's like when we first moved out here, it was in February, and there was this ice storm, which they were like, that never happens. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then now this blizzard where we got seriously, like six to 10 inches of snow, snow in one night. And, I, and they were like, this hasn't happened in 20 years. And I'm like, I don't believe you. I don't believe you at all. I don't think that's true. Either. I don't think that's true. I probably made up the 20 years number if I'm being it's honest. It's just our way of saying don't leave. <laughs> They're like, please stay, this never happens. It's the weather's way to say you can't leave. <laughs> oh. But I yeah, know, that was crazy. Here, we get super hot in the summer, but my favorite story was when I was out visiting in uh, Missouri Star as a big treat to their employees. Took us all to see a Kansas City Royals game, right? Yeah. And it was August, and it was dollar hot dog night. Yeah. And I came with a pocket full of cash, and I still lost like 10 pounds. <laughs> it was so hot. We so hot. At 11 p.m. You know, and we were, oh, it was just the humidity. That was the one I wasn't ready for yet. Oh, oh yeah, it was, it was like that when 4th of July, we went to go watch fireworks and it's dark outside right? and I, I'm just drenched in sweat. It's like 98 and I'm like, what is this? What is this place? It's, a great place. it's actually not that bad if you just stay inside all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I love being a quilter in Missouri. I get a lot of quilting done. <laughs> Amanda, I'm not tempted to go to the beach all the time. She makes a good point. She said, "Stuck at home with paints." Yes, please. Yes, That's please. true. Yeah. That's true. I did have a the day we were snowed in. I couldn't like go to work to ship orders, and so I'm like, "Well, I guess I got to paint." Let's get ahead of the game. Let's what a shame. It was a lot of fun, and then those little extra afternoon afternoons where you don't really plan on having those moments, you just kind of play and do fun stuff. That's what I did anyway. Probably would have been more responsible if I worked, but you know, those you days are jazz music. exactly <laughs> worth it. Overrated. Work is overrated, except my job. My I was going to say, that's <laughs> arts and crafts. Okay. Yeah, I have become very aware of the fact that I'm incredibly blessed to do arts and crafts for a living. It's I'm the greatest. Every day. It is the greatest. Yeah, Jen asked, Jen asked if this is just a regular pen. It is, you can use a pen or a pencil. 
Rob had the great idea of using a colored pen or pencil so you can, oh, yeah, like he did, yes. Oh, yeah. So now you can see what lines he's made and what lines he hasn't made. Because and you can reuse the tracings yes. as well as the graphite. Yes. So when we share it at home, me and my daughter and whoever grandma comes over, we'll paint, we'll share the same tracing. Yeah. So we just do different colors. And like he's made me oh. one of these fancy pencils and I left it at home today. But yeah, you can switch out the lead. Uh, oh, don't you be unaware. We watch every Tuesday and the first thing we watch is, is the pencil on the set. <laughs> and it's always on the set. And that's why I didn't I harass think, you. Tonight. I think last time <laughs> I, after I took it home and then I've been using it and it was so funny. I came in, I'm like, dang it, I forgot my pencil. Right, right. And Rob's going to be here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I came in looking, but I knew it was on the set last week because I'd already checked. So don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you like it. It's fun when you have a tool that you like and uh, and works and is helpful. Yeah. Well, okay. So I know it's your show, so I got to stop talking pretty soon. But <laughs> for me, the reason I like to be here is I don't spend enough time working physically, tactilely by hand. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm traveling, my source of design is now on an iPad because I can do so much auditioning. I can carry so few tools with me. And I can communicate with my team and the resources necessary. Like when the, when the you know, it becomes an idea and it goes into a pattern, and then mm -hmm. the drawing's already done in a vector based format, blah, 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 technical, that kind of stuff. But I don't use a pen and pencil very often. And just the touching of paper, just the touching yeah. of the brush, you know, there's something that's so important about being tactile. And so, yes, I get it all the time in quilting, but funny enough, I used to love to draw. And I stopped mm -hmm. drawing years ago when digital technology yeah. became. And so, yeah, it, getting, making the pens and pencils has been as much about making the wood tools as using mm -hmm. the wood tools. Mm -hmm. and, and so, kind yeah, of about that process at home, please, of creating. Your hands for however, building houses, How you trace. whatever it is, right? Yeah, that looks great. It's a little dark, but it's great. No, that's great. Okay, oh, uh, Eleanor asked about the Let's Make Art Matter postcard. Thank you so much for asking about that. We're gonna do the live for that on Friday. We're gonna do a special, just a quick live on Friday at noon. Uh, where we will paint that and I'll post tomorrow what we're going to paint on it. Now, if you're not really sure what I'm talking about, Let's Make Art Matter is part of the subscription that we offer. It's just a pre-addressed, pre-stamped postcard, um, watercolor postcard that you can paint on and we all send it to the same person who just needs a little extra love in their life. And it's literally my favorite thing. And um, if you don't have the subscription, you can absolutely still do it with us. We sell those watercolor postcards on our website. You can just throw it in with your next order. And, um, and also you can paint whatever you want on it. So don't feel like you have to wait for me if you don't want to. Usually I do a live around the end of the month where we paint the postcard together and send it off. Um, but if you wanna paint something else, you're, you're free to. It's your life, do what you want. So, okay. We are good to go drawing wise, but first we have to uh, take our oath. So you gotta raise your right hand and you have to repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. Rob. <laughs> and I promise to have fun. I promise to have fun. Thank you. And I love starting that way because especially if we're not comfortable doing something when we approach it, we're kind of really stressed and we're like, I'm not, you're, you're kind of scared. And this is a, this is a chill zone. This is about having fun and making something and we're always learning. So even if you make a painting that you don't love, you probably learned something about it and that makes it worth it. So um, don't compare yourself. It's, it's the thief of joy. Just be happy with where you are. And if you keep on doing it, you'll just get better. Okay. Great. Now we're going to start with some warm up. So I want you to take your outline and put it to the side. And we're just going to do a couple little technical warm ups to get us um, used to watercolor and the paints and all the colors and all that good stuff. So uh, for our warm ups, I just want you to take your brush and you're going to dip it in your water. Now, if you're new to watercolor, you're going to do one of two things. You're probably going to use too much water. So after you get it wet, you wanna hit it off the side so it's not dripping. Just enough to where your paintbrush is moist, um, but not so much that it's like dripping all over because that's just too much water on your paper. 
So you kind of hit it off the side. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna practice just blending. So I want you to pick up some paint, any color, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna start with red, but you can do whatever color you want. And I'm just gonna kind of go up and down. Now, if I have too much paint on my brush and not enough water, see how it's kind of roughing out and I'm not getting a smooth line? That's because there's not enough water on my paintbrush. So whenever you see that, that's when you know, oh, I just gotta do a, a nice little dip in the water, hit it off, and now I'm gonna get a smooth line. So just kind of play with that. Now what I want you to do is just pick up water on your brush, and I just kind of want you to blend out that color that you laid down. So you're gonna grab the color that you already laid down, and you're just gonna move it across to the right. And you'll notice that it's getting lighter. And that's because the wonderful thing about watercolor is we don't use white paint really. We use the white of the paper to do the work for us, which is honestly why I love watercolor so much is because it's just, it's easier. It does all the work for you. So instead of having to like mix white in to get a lighter color, all you do is you add water. It's gonna make your paint more transparent, which shows the white of your paper more, which is what we want. Now the next thing that we're gonna practice is we're gonna practice three different values. Now value is just the level of lightness or darkness of a color. So if you want a dark value, you're gonna have more paint on your brush than water. So I'm gonna get my brush wet and I'm gonna pick up a lot of paint. I'm gonna do purple this time. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna really soak my brush with this paint. And then I'm just gonna do a circle and see how See how dark that circle is? That is a dark value. That's just mean it's uh, not as transparent. Now, I'm gonna dip my brush in the water just like once, maybe twice, hit it off. I'm just adding a little bit of water to it because now I have a lighter value. This is a medium value here. Yep, yep, exactly. And then I want you to like mostly rinse off your brush to where you're just gonna have a tiny bit of color left. And this is your light value. And I can even keep going. I'm gonna see how far I can go. So that's a little bit lighter. Let's see if I can get it barely, barely there. There we go. That's like a barely there color. Now, for your barely there color, when you're, if you're not used to watercolor and you're used to maybe acrylic or oil, like really thick pasty paints, you might look at them, that and think that's not dark enough. But with watercolor, we actually really want these really light, subtle changes because they might not seem dark, but on your painting, they are absolutely seen. Like on my fur, these washes here on the edge, that's a barely there color and that's what we want. We have a super dark value and we have barely there and we have some white highlights. And if you have that full range of value from dark to light, that's gonna make your painting pop. It's gonna make it kind of elevate. Now, we're just gonna practice one more thing. Let's grab our two. And we're gonna practice just long, thin, skinny lines so, the wonderful thing about rounds, because we're painting with rounds tonight, is they have a thick body and then a nice, sharp, narrow top. And that's because you can do a thin and thick stroke in the same stroke, just depending on your pressure. So this is like me pushing really hard. This is how thick I can get that line to be. Even though this is a two, this is a small brush. And that's because I'm using the full belly of the brush. That's the whole thing. And you can get that by having kind of more of a sideways or a horizontal hold. So having it more on its side is how you can get that thick line. But I like having really thin lines for my detail work, like my whiskers or some fuzz texture or fur texture that we're going to have. So to get that line, you are going to want to have more of a vertical hold. So the paintbrush is more up and down. So you're right on the tip and then you're just gonna be soft pressure and just doing straight lines. Now I got some roughness right there, so I added a little bit more water, so then I would know that I needed to, yes, excellent, that's very nice. Now for this hedgehog, we do whiskers at the end, 
but um, whiskers can be really scary. <laughs> so if you don't wanna add those to yours, that's totally fine. You can make that decision, it's your painting. Um, because whiskers are pretty much like this, right? But it's kind of hard to get those really thin lines and it takes a lot of practice. So if you're not there yet, don't be hard on yourself. It just takes time, you'll get there. Very nice. Oh, oh, Rob. Oh, Rob. Oh. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay. Now the last warm-up we're going to do before we get started with this wonderful painting is we're just going to practice some spikes. Like, so when I do spikes, what you kind of want to keep in mind is you want them to start off kind of here. Let me get a new paper so you guys can see. <laughs> just throw it. That's how we do it around here. <laughs> Just throw it away. <laughs> so we're going to start thick and then we're going to kind of like wisp our brush. So you see how it gets more narrow at the top and it's kind of thick at the bottom. So you're going to kind of like move your hand up and away from the paper as you're doing this. So it's kind of almost like a check mark or something. So instead of doing like an even thick stroke like that, we want it to kind of get narrow at the top. So just kind of practice. And they don't all have to be perfect. There's gonna be a bazillion of these little things in your hedgehog. Nobody's gonna notice if a few look a little wonky. So don't stress, but just kind of, yeah. Just kind of practice. For me, it's easier to go from thick to thin. Um, if some people, it might be easier to do um, thin to thick. So kind of play that way maybe. So this I'm doing light pressure and then I'm pushing down hard. It's up to you. Would that matter where your paint then is gonna end up? I mean, it still seems like it's darker at the bottom because that's where my brush mm -hmm. is ending when I go tip narrow to thick. Yeah. I have more control that way. Yeah, if that feels better to you, that's fine. The paint and where it's gonna end on that, it doesn't really it doesn't matter. matter. It's not no, because really most of these we're actually gonna blend out and add a bunch of water to, so it's not a huge mm -hmm. deal. Yeah, that looks great. Cool. Fabulous, you guys are doing awesome. Just so you know, we turned the heater off in this apartment because the heater is really loud and I am so cold right now. <laughs> are you guys cold? <laughs> I am freezing. Well, I left my jacket on. <laughs> but I, I should like I the beanie on bundle the up. Yeah, I'm right. gonna have a scarf or something. The, the, the beanie on camera would be way unprofessional. The baseball cap is like 65 degrees. Yeah. It's been dark for four hours outside. It doesn't matter, I'm wearing a baseball cap. <laughs> So I hope you guys are warm. We're doing this for you. Okay, this is how much we love you. So I think I think we're ready to go. You guys ready? Let's go for it. Let's do it. What do we do with these to over there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's how we do it around here. We just toss it, but you have to pick it up later. No, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay. Now, um, for I ripped mine off the top, so I'm just gonna tape it to it. That's me, you don't have to do that. But I like, usually when I paint and if I have a pad of paper, I like to keep it glued on while I'm painting because it keeps it rigid there and so it doesn't bend as much. So that's what I like to do. You don't have to do that or you can tape all of the sides using that painter tape and it's gonna stay a little bit more flat while you're painting. Now, our steps. Let's do it. Step one, we're gonna do the color on the face and the ears. Did we start with the ears the very first time, Keenan? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you edited that video. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't remember and I painted it. You don't remember me being there? No, I don't remember what I started with. Was it the ears or the oh, fur? I, don't remember. I didn't paint. Let's start with the fur. Okay, so for this color, we have some browns that you can absolutely use. So if you just wanna use a little bit of your uh, sepia, sepia, I'm just gonna say it both ways every time. So my bases are covered. And you're gonna add a lot of water to it. So if you can see my palette here, it's a lot, it's really light. So don't be afraid to use that water. And then um, I always like to mix a little bit of other colors in with my browns too because it just gives it a little bit of depth. So I can grab some yellow ochre and maybe a little bit of the violet. 
Now, if I grabbed yellow and then I grabbed blue, it's gonna give it a green hint. Um, and if you don't like that, then mix a little red in there and that red will knock that green down. Complementary colors. Okay, so I'm going to just start filling in my fur. So I'm gonna put my color down and this is what I like to do is I like to put my color down and then just using water, I just spread it out. So it's a nice light wash. And the reason why I like to do this is because it's a, if it's a light wash, you can just build on top of it. Um, if it's super dark with watercolor, you can't really erase. So it's usually easier to start off light and then to um, just add on top of it to create depth. Yes, very nice. Exactly, just like that. So I have some little furs. And then as I get to the edges here, I'm going to let my paint get really, really light. So you see how that color is like barely, barely there? That's okay. We want a barely there color at the end. And then for me, I added a little bit of pink to my mixture to do around the mouth because it kind of has that skin tone. So if you notice on animals like their ears and around their mouth and sometimes their belly, it kind of has that pink color that skin has where their fur isn't covering. So that's why I like to add a little bit of pink. So I'm just going to kind of put just, just a touch, it's just a soft little Just a hint of pink there, or red. I guess I added a little bit of red rose to my brown mixture and that gave that that peach color because there's already brown on there. Now, if I put red directly onto that, it would be a little bit too bright. So that's why we mixed it with the brown to tone it down and give it a little bit of peach. Very nice. Yes, that looks so good. Okay, so. So to break this down, uh, just a little more water? No. Uh, to blend it a little better? Yeah, so if, here I'll move it to the center. Do you just not like that line right in yeah. there? Okay, so this line is really subtle, so don't stress about it if that's oh, bothering I'm not you. Stressing. <laughs> you don't seem like you're no. stressing. Still got one. So what you can do if that line's bothering you is you can keep working it back and forth to okay. try and blend that out. And if that line still doesn't work, then what you would want to do is actually pick up a little bit of paint oh, okay. and try and work on the other side of that line to kind of even it out. I haven't done watercolor since I was oh, 12. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, you're doing awesome so far. All right. you're, you're nailing it. Okay. Now I'm gonna move on to the ears. Now, here's the thing you guys, I like to work pretty fast because I've been doing this a really long time. That's why I also like having people who don't paint all the time with me because first of all, they tell me to slow down and then they ask questions that I might not think to ask. But um, two things, feel free to go at your own pace. You can always like pause this video, can't they? No, not you're like, that. oh, they can rewatch it. Later. can't they yeah, do that on that. YouTube though? Yeah. The tutorials, they can pause, but I don't think they can pause. During the live? Well, maybe they pause, but they're, you don't stop. They right, I don't stop. stop. Watching, yeah, they, they just pause, stop watching. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Good. Well, you could rewatch it later. <laughs> you can rewatch it later and go at your own pace. I know that some people like to do that. But also, I would like to challenge you to try and keep up a little bit because sometimes having to paint fast just means you have to make decisions quicker, which means one, you're not stressing as much about your painting. And two, you kind of learn a little bit faster because you're like, ooh, I just gotta do this quick and I gotta do this and it's not a big deal. I know my daughter's been watching a lot of your videos with the closed captioning on. Oh, really? Because it's sometimes I get noisy in the house and she's really listening mm -hmm. to what you're saying. Oh. And, but she's watching the short version of the tutorial, not uh -huh. the live stuff yeah. as often because she can't always join us on Tuesday nights. Yeah. So I thought that was clever to use the closed caption. That is clever. Yeah. Okay. Because we're making a bunch of noise. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I'm going to start my ears. Now, the tip of my ears is gonna be nice and dark. So if you have your reference photo, you can kind of take a look here. So I'm gonna do a darker line here, and then I'm just gonna use water to kind of blend this out to get it lighter in the middle. So to get a nice darker brown, I'm gonna take a little bit of my sepia sepia, and I'm gonna take a little bit of violet, and I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue, and maybe a little red. And now I'm gonna have like a darker brown. So just remember to mix your color. For me, I love mixing, which is why I have this huge palette, because it makes it your own. And because we're mixing our colors, Rob's color is gonna be different from mine, and that's really cool. That's what we love. So, um, you know, just have fun with it. So I'm just gonna take my dark color, and I'm gonna go on the outside of the ear, kind of like two-thirds of the way. And then mirror on the other side. And if you go all the way, it's not a big deal. I'll go all the way on one just to show you that it doesn't really matter. It's not a big deal. And then I'm gonna kind of rinse my brush and I'm gonna pick up that like a soft brown with a little bit of my uh, red rose and I'm gonna blend out this brown. Now remember, we have like furry texture up here, so your ears aren't gonna be a nice clean line. You, we kinda have to let some like triangles in a fur. So it's gonna be kind of a messy line, and that's okay. We want it a little bit messy. Messy is, is natural. Messy is what actually is going on. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just kinda blend that out using water. And I'm gonna drop a little bit of pink kind of near um, where it would get closer to the hole of the ear. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Kenan. The, ear <laughs> the hole. hole of the ear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Are you worried at all about how much water was in that wash? You know what I mean? So yeah. the pink doesn't spread out too fast because I had that happen on my brown a little bit. Um, I, well, I've what noticed- you the wash? I like the wash. I think that it creates really cool textures, but also if you notice that your water is kind of puddling on your paper, you are using too much water. And if that's the case, all you have to do is you just take your paper towel and lift up that extra water. Now, I don't have a lot of extra water here, so it's not doing a ton, but if you notice that you're having sections where your water is kind of staying on top of the paper, you need to suck that baby up and then it's still moist and you can just keep on going. It's not a big deal. To the center of my pad? Not on your pad, but center with your pad in front of? Like this? You know? No, like this? This way, towards This. Me. This. <laughs> Was it in the way of the camera? Yeah, I just wanted to get a better view because some people okay. they really like it. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> I could have been more clear. That was not my bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we did our ears. We did some, our face. We're going to move on to step two. I feel good about that. I feel like we did a lot for step one. Yes, that looks great. That's looking really good. And I love that texture you have right there. <laughs> so we're going to move on to the spikes. Now, we are doing um, kind of a loose interpretation of what's going on in the hedgehog spiky field. Have you ever, has anybody here touched a hedgehog? No. I have no idea what they actually feel like. They look sharp. I don't know though. They're smart little fellas. Are they soft? Mm -hmm. Like, are their spikes kind of like fur? Yeah. Oh. But thick. But thick, like gathered. Like German Shepherd thick. Oh. Okay. Maybe more like dreadlocks than actual spikes. Like they're not mm. sharp. No, they're not sharp. They're not okay. Sharp. They're just nappy little. Okay. I've been using spiky a lot, and maybe that was the wrong <laughs> word. <laughs> My but... only reference is this painting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So when you do your spikes, two things I want you to keep in mind. One, we want them to be nice and dark. So mix pretty much all of your colors to get a nice dark brown. Two is I want you to pay attention to the direction of your spikes. Now on the outline, it kind of gives you an idea, but basically we want the spikes to do this in terms of direction. They're gonna go. So they kind of meet up in the middle 
and they're kind of directional going in on either side and then they kind of turn. And this is important because the direction of your brush strokes informs the viewer the shape of the actual form itself. So if we just did vertical brush strokes up and down like this, we're not giving the idea of that this is an actual three-dimensional form. So we have to paint our brush strokes as if we were painting on the body itself, which is why they switch direction because it's a sphere, right? So keep that in mind. So I'm gonna, I'm still using my six. I'm gonna grab a bunch of sepia and sepia and some <laughs> yellow ochre and some violet and some red rose and some blue. And if that, that's reading really purple blue, so I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow ochre and tone that down. There we go, that's a nice dark brown. And then I'm just gonna start putting in my spikes. So kind of think of our warm up practice here. Of, and see, they're all different sizes, they're all different shapes, that's okay. Don't feel like your little spike dark shadows have to be exactly the same, they don't because first of all, we're gonna blend them all out anyway. And second of all, that's not true how we would see them in nature anyway. And then, so you can see that my brush strokes are starting to shift. And now in the middle, they're a little bit, these ones, the ones in the middle kind of go more up and down because they're gathered there. So they kind of meet there. And you can see I have different colors as I go. Right, this one I picked up a little bit more yellow ochre, so it's more of a warm brown instead of a cool brown. That's okay. If you look at our example, we have lots of different colors within our spiky, furry area, and I think it actually just adds to the painting. So um, don't stress about that. See, I got some thick ones, I got some thin ones. Really just kind of be loose and have fun with it. Yes, very nice, very nice. Now I'm kind of adding a little bit too much to stop. Tell yourself to stop if you know you're going crazy, you know? Like, calm down, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> Kimberly's telling me to live on the edge. You're right, Kimberly, I can do as many spikes as I want. <laughs> Just Why not? We're just gonna blend them out. We're just gonna blend them out anyway. Yeah. 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 You guys, that's step two. You did it. That that was it. Nailed it. Moving on to step three. We're gonna <sighs> blend these guys out. Now, when you're blending, you need to keep this in mind because this is what you're gonna want to do. You're wanna you're gonna want to get your brush nice and wet, and you're just gonna want to do this but we don't wanna do that because we wanna leave some white spaces for highlights. So if you look on our example, all of these white chunks, that's just the white of the paper and I just left them there as I was filling them in. So just keep that in mind when you're starting to blend this out. So get your brush wet, pick up a little bit of color or you can, if you're still really wet, you can maybe just use the paint from your dark spikes and you're basically gonna do those same movements through and leave white spaces. Did you happen to see what Caroline said? What did Caroline say? She said, live on the head. <laughs> live, live on the head. Well done, Caroline. Caroline. Oh, Thank well done. you for that. That was excellent. I love puns. That was so great. So I'm just using a lighter wash. So some of my spikes are starting to blend out so I can work them with a brush to make them blend a little bit more. Just remember to leave those white spaces, you guys. It will help a lot with your painting. Yep. Now for you, can I take yours to yeah. the middle? Okay, oh, I got water drops. Let me wipe those off, okay. So this is looking really good, but I want a little bit more color in here, right? Because this is kind of like a, a gray brown. Mm -hmm. And so don't be afraid to live on the edge and just drop in some color. So if like, is it okay if I paint yeah. on yours? Okay, sometimes I do that and not ask people and I realize how rude that is. So let's say I add some water, go ahead and just grab some color and drop that in. Oh. And then do a little bit of other color. 
So just by adding in some different colors while you're blending, you're gonna get way more interesting textures, you're gonna get way more interest in itself because we have these spots of color. So as you're blending, kind of pay attention to your washes and see if you like that color and don't be afraid if uh, you wanna, yeah, that looks great. Now, as you get to the edge here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use mostly water to do my edge spikes. So I'm gonna kind of just like do my kind of flicking thing that we were kind of working on, but it's gonna be a really light wash. Because if you look at animals in general, they don't have a hard outline around them. There's not like a thick black line going around them. Because actually when you outline something that's really dark, it tends to flatten your image. So it's okay if the edges of your animal are really light. That's what we wanna see. Okay, so this is, but I, I just want, I still want more color in mine. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the, the red rose. I'm gonna mix it with my yellow ochre. I'm gonna get kind of an orange color going in here. And if you did this and you're like, whoa, that's too much. Well, just take some water, blend it out. It's not a big deal. I'm gonna put a little bit of blue to tone that out maybe on top. I think it's fun to just have strong color in certain places. It just makes it more your own. And this one, I'm gonna mix a little bit of red with my blue to get kind of more of a purpley color. Mix that with my brown, so I'm gonna have more of a purpley brown. That's cool too. And I'm gonna just go crazy with this. We have people who are saying that they're lurkers. <laughs> they're just lurking and watching. I appreciate you joining us. We appreciate your honesty. Yes. But it's way more fun to paint. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes they'll have to paint later because you know responsibilities. Yeah. I have young children and I definitely mm -hmm. have to wait for them to be in bed sometimes. I was gonna talk to you about how inconvenient it does fall in California around my dinner time. <laughs> It is. And a lot of times we're <laughs> rushing to get our painting done so we can start to get dinner, get back to that homework, you know. Because what is that, like 5.15? <laughs> yeah, That's like right like at dinner time. Yeah, it's not like <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not around 5.15. It is exactly 5.15. <laughs> well, it's funny because uh, my daughter gets home usually and then she loves to do it, but sometimes her friend's over mm -hmm. and she wants to paint, but then she can't always stay past six. And so it's just yeah. funny because it's... So we're, we're, we've been petitioning, you know, your customer service department with <laughs> if we can reschedule the painting while just for Rob and Ruby. But. Oh, that is funny. She's I at a basketball. I didn't tell you. She, she texted back. She's at a basketball game. She's going to watch later. Okay. Yeah, well, Ruby, I hope you watch later. I can't wait to see what your hedgehog looks like. They did the boots. Her and Grandma did the boots on Thanksgiving morning. Oh, yeah? Oh, uh, it turned out really nice. I love that project. Well, that I was a lot of fun. Your tip that you kept... What's, what's fun, I was listening. I was in the background. I wasn't able to, well, I chose not to participate. You chose, I chose Rob. Not to, right, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> that was I your was, choice. I was drawing it well. <laughs> I was having my own art moment. But uh, it, was, it was neat because I was kind of listening to that. And all of the, like, you were just, it's okay. It's all free, which is exactly as it should be. But then you gave this wonderful information about how to separate the boots by the dark and the light line. Mm -hmm. And just... And the value in that moment of conversation was so golden too. So don't forget that as free and as fluid as you are, there's these tidbits of fantastic information in these videos. Well, so I'm serious. I was like, yeah, that right there. Listen to that girls again. Like, I feel like really I'm funny. like free and fluid. And then I'm like, except don't do, do this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> do whatever you want. Except, except for. this. That's and then I like, right? and then I feel bad. And then I'm like, well, you could do whatever you want. It's your painting. It's your life. Yeah, no, that was that was a really good tip, and you know, because it is uh, having you to follow along, especially with the kits, just makes it so nice. You know, yeah. and having the the traceables and stuff, it's just it's it made it because I, I know I told you last time I just I never would have thought I would enjoy watercoloring because yeah. it is so free and loose, and I'm such a control freak. Yes, and, and a lot of people have difficulty with that because of that. Yeah, yeah. So I actually look forward to 
Tuesday nights for that reason is it's the time I'm not in charge. I'm, not <laughs> I'm in charge. No, um, actually that reminded me, somebody on Facebook posted on our group, let's make art together. They just said like, I haven't had any experience with watercolors and all of your paintings are so wonderful. What's your background or can I do this? And there were literally over a hundred comments of people being like, we've never painted right. before and we are able to do this. And it was like one of those moments where I was just like, Yes. yes, that's exactly what I want. So thank you guys for encouraging each other and being, you know, each other's comfort mm -hmm. because sometimes, I mean, I've been painting a really long time. And so sometimes mm -hmm. when I say like, you can do this, you're like, Ooh, can I really? And the answer is yes, yes, yes you can. Yes. And I didn't even have to tell you that. And that was the best part. Okay. Yes. They're looking so good. Now I'm going to put a little bit of dark back into mine because I just want some darker moments. So I'm taking some, because sometimes when we put our shadows in and then we blend them out, then we kind of tone down our darker values. And so I like to sometimes go in and put them back in, just here and there. And then that way I'm gonna have that full range. I hear, I see people are writing uh, facts about hedgehogs. <laughs> Keenan, do you have one you wanna share? That's yeah, maybe- my favorite hedgehog <laughs> <laughs> Mainly, stay, Mainly on stay on the ground. Mainly. <laughs> that was such a great moment. But I think somebody said um, they, that they scratch. What did they, they say? Scratch their eyes out. They like scratched. Accidentally. So oh no. That's so sad. Socket, poor eyesight. Mm -hmm. They'll go to scratch the side of their head and it's gone. Oh, mm -hmm. that's a mm -hmm. sad mm -hmm. fact. Sad fact, but a really interesting. But interesting. What's What's more sad, I think, is this person found out through personal experience. Oh, we're so sorry for you. We feel for you. That, that would be really heartbreaking. Okay, I feel good about my spiky, fuzzy area. I'm gonna leave it. I'm, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop. That's looking really good. I wanna bring some dark back into yours if that's okay. Yep. And I want you to do a little bit, this is your painting first of all, you don't have to listen to no, me. I almost say that, I'm here for the, the education. But I want a little bit more color in here. So we have some great, go, I'll bring yours to the middle too. So we have some great um, like tan brown moments, but I feel like we have a lot of this color going on. Okay. You see that? So I just kind of want to break that up a little bit. Is it okay little, if I paint? Yeah, certainly. So I'm just going to go so right not over it. Lighter, but literally it's more of the in blue between. And the purple. Yeah, and maybe a, a little in between because this is a really light value. That's a really oh, dark value. God. We're missing kind of a medium value. Got it. So go back in with kind of a medium value. Now, and is that because I've been using such a wet brush? Mm-hmm. You're using a lot of water. Got it. Thank you. Okay. And kind of same thing with yours is we have these dark moments. We have these really light moments. And this is really nice over here. And I kind of want more of that all around. That's what you did. <laughs> <laughs> Shh, no, it was, it was you. It was great. So I'm just going to go in and put in some kind of medium in here. Okay. And you can kind of just do that all around. You can maybe put in a little bit of like more of a purple. And then by having those, making sure that you have your light, your medium, and your dark, you are going to get more of a form feeling of your animal. If you just have kind of one or the other and it's not the full spectrum, you're not going to get the same amount of depth. Whoa, turn my brush around. <laughs> Calm down, Dad. Can you just calm down? <laughs> Stop throwing that. brushes, please. Okay. Well, you had to talk to him once. <laughs> I know. Okay. So then. So uh, we did our blending, and uh, that's it for step three. You guys, good job. You're doing so good. Uh, now we're going to move on to step four, which is oh, no, we're not done. We have the spikes on the top of the head. Plot ah, twist. Plot twist. We're not done with step three, still on it. Just do those little spikes on the head. Now for me, what I like to do with the spikes on the head is the same thing, I'm gonna do my darks. Ooh, I need a darker color there. Hold on, let me mix a darker color. So I'm gonna do my spikes kinda at the top and they're kinda gonna go out a little bit. Remember not to have them perfectly straight up and down the entire way because it's gonna look more like a buzz cut than like pokies. So I, I'm gonna do my shadows. And then I'm just gonna use water and kind of 
blend those out. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow. And remember, we want the top of it to be really light value. So grab that water, make sure it's really light, and then you can go back in and drop in some medium color in there. Just like that. Yeah, very nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and have them kind of go out a little bit too. Okay. Because we don't want them, they're still keeping that round form, so the spikes aren't going to be perfectly up and down across. They're going to kind of like a sun ray. Do I need to make that noise again, Keenan? I think you should. All my you know, sounds probably are yeah, really yeah. tough on closed captioning. <laughs> popcorn noise. <laughs> yes. Insert popcorn noise. Now the one you did earlier when you're like you just kind of got a zoop or yeah. whatever you did. I don't even remember. Double wave sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. The Sorry about that. Inside of the conch. <laughs> on a warm summer day. Okay, now we're done with step three. Now we're gonna move on to kind of finishing off this furry area and the face and then those last minute details. So we're like more than halfway done with this painting and you guys are doing so good. I hope you're enjoying this. And um, okay, so we're gonna do our furry part here. Now we wanna keep a lighter wash but what I want to draw attention to is I have these sections outlined around the hands right here. So if you look on your reference photo, if you look at the value, this is a darker value around the hands. And the reason of that is because we almost want it to seem like these hands are coming out from somewhere deep. That's why you need to have that dark value there. If it was all a light, even value, then those hands would look like they're just floating and they're not coming out of anywhere. And because this hedgehog is kind of like curled up within its body, the hands are tight by the body and reaching out. So I like to put my shadows in first and then do my lights after. So I'm gonna do a brown, like a darker brown. Maybe not as dark as my spikes, not, not that dark, but I'm gonna just put in, I'm gonna start around the hand, I have my dark. So there's my shadow. And remember the outline is just a guideline. Don't feel like you have to block it in because we don't want it to be blocked in. It would seem too sectiony. We want them to blend. So I'm gonna put in my shadow and I'm gonna just blend out this color. So it still stays nice and dark around the hand and then it gets lighter as it goes out. Now this brown is just too flat for me, so I'm gonna just drop in some other color. But again, it's your painting. You can do whatever you want. It's your world that you're making. Okay. And then kind of on the other underside of the hand, just kind of along the fingers, I'm gonna kind of do a dark, just a nice little dark. I'm still using my six, and that's because I still get a nice kind of tip sharp tip with my six, but if you feel comfortable using a two, feel free to use a two. And then I'm just gonna blend that out. And those browns are very different, so I'm gonna come back in with the same brown. Oh, and don't forget to use your paper towel. Sometimes if I put a color down and it's too strong of a color, I'll just actually pull, like, put it, what's the word, like, um, blot, it. blot it, thank you, <clears throat> blot it on my paper towel, and it's going to lift up some of that color. Now when we get to the under the chin part, we actually want this to be a darker value also, and you can see here, is because we want the mouth to poke out and we want the neck to recede and that's, sorry I hit my mic, sorry if that made a weird noise. Okay, um, the light is looking at the hedgehog and so the chin itself is casting a shadow onto the fur and your neck is farther away from your light and your, from the light and your chin and your nose are closer which is why your chin and nose and mouth would be lighter and your neck would be darker. So, when I'm doing the fur on my hedgehog, 
underneath the mouth, I'm gonna make sure it's darker. And that's gonna help my chin poke out more, which it just gives me more form to my animal, which is really what we're trying to do, is trying to convince people that this is actually a three-dimensional thing. And grab a little bit of pink in there. Too much water? Mm hmm. There's not enough, like, uh, it's just all washed out, but I know mm. I'm going to fix it. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the shadow on the other side of my hand. And it doesn't really matter if you wanted to do both hands at the same time and work them up or do one first and then the other, not a big deal. Whatever feels good to you. So I put in my shadow and then I'm just gonna use water and blend that out. I'm gonna bring in a little bit more warmth it might be like warmth. Uh, colors have temperatures. So if you think of red, orange, and yellow, those are warm colors, and green and purple and blue, those are cool colors. So kind of looking at this, this area seems a little bit more warmer than this area. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of my sepia or my yellow ochre and add in some warmth. Now, if you put an area down and or some color down and it's too dark, you can lift up water um, or you can lift up the color. So let's say I put this in and I want that to be lighter. I don't like how dark that is. Then rinse your brush, pat it on your paper towel, and you're literally just going to take your brush and wipe up and then pat it on your paper towel and then just keep on doing that. Now it's not gonna totally erase the color, but it will lighten it up. You just have to work quickly because sometimes we put a color down that's too dark and we get down on ourselves and we stop and we're like, we don't know what to do. Don't stress, just grab some water, lighten it up, pat it with your paper towel and you'll be just fine. Okay. So I put my shadows in around my chin. I have them around my hands, which is great because I'm getting some depth going on. I'm getting some shape, some shadow. Um, I'm not gonna do my hands just yet because sometimes we have to let areas dry before we work around them or else they just blend all together and get kind of messy. So I'm gonna put paws on my hands and I'm gonna work a little bit on the face while we have that fur drive around the hands themselves. So if you look at our hedgehog here, we have a little bit of shadow right in the middle here and around the eyeballs and a little bit on the mouth. So we're going to put that in right now. So you can switch to, I'll switch to my two right now because we're working in smaller areas. And I'm going to grab a brown and just kind of going Just on yours. It's okay. <laughs> got a backup. I got a backup here. Oh, don't mind me. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, I got a turtleneck on. That's going to be a pain. You want me to, I was going to say, we could just switch the. Yes. Switch the batteries. Let's do that. No, we're just going to switch the things themselves. That are seeing it live. <laughs> okay, do we have sound again? Is that better? I don't know how twisty twirly my mic is now that I unclipped it. Not too terrible. Are we good? Sounds back. You're good. Okay. 
Kimberly living on the edge. We are Kimberly by not checking our batteries. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you guys, sorry about that. Okay, so when I do the shadows around my eyes, so if you, if you look at the outline, there's like a little bit of shadow before it, kind of around it and behind it. And that's because we're trying to show that these are little sockets, right? They're like eyeball sockets. So like most animals are gonna have, I mean, we have them ourselves. So we, uh, if you were ever to paint a person, around the eyeballs underneath and behind are gonna be shadowed because there's no bone there, it's not sticking out. It kind of goes in and then the eyeball itself is what pokes out. So that's why we put these little shadows in to give a little sense of depth to the eyes. And then I like to kind of blend out a little bit so it's not like super dark. You know, I don't want it to be like I'm putting makeup on my um, hedgehog. I kind of want it to seem a little bit natural. So I'll put color in and then I'll just kind of blend out. Now when I do the middle here, my middle spikes, I'm gonna kind of do that same kind of uh, wispy feel where it kind of like, that kind of um, spiky texture feel to get that hair fur texture going on. And that's just right in the middle, just a little shadow. And it's just the shape of the, the skull, it's farther away. Uh, same thing with like dogs, if you're ever painting a dog, right between the eyes there's gonna be a shadow right there, because it goes away. Okay. So, okay, I'm gonna move on to my mouth. No, yeah, this is looking really good. I would just say that maybe you are following the outline a little bit too close. Yep. So let it get messy, blend that sucker out. And it's just gonna give it kind of more of a natural feel. Because we don't want it to be blocky. There you go, how is yours doing? Oh, it's blending. Yeah, that looks great. I might have had the opposite situation and not, not close enough to the line. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say as I kind of just want to lighten up this line a little bit, I'm going to blend out some of this color. Oh, and blending it towards the nose. Yeah, because we don't want a super harsh dark line yeah, around it either. I dragging the circle around. I didn't think about bringing it towards the nose. That's so I'm just kind of blending it. And then that way it's a smoother transition to the eye and not such a hard yeah. line. Yeah. There you go. That makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now we're going to work on the mouth a little bit. Now around the like curl of the lip, like one of the sides, I have a line here. I'm gonna just kind of, kind of define that. Oh, that makes it look like that's smiling, that's cute. And I'm gonna put in a little bit of shadow around this lip. And that's just gonna give it a little bit more dimension. So I just took a little bit of a darker color and I just kind of shadowed this mouth. Now you can add a little bit of that red rose in there to get that skin kind of color we're going for. And also maybe a little blue, maybe a little violet. It's pronounced with the long E, sepia. That makes me so sad because I just feel like sepia sounds better. Don't you think? I mean, which dictionary? <laughs> Which dictionary are you looking this up? Is it the right? No, just kidding. Okay, it's sepia. Thank you for looking that up. So it just kind of goes around the mouth. Because we want the mouth itself to be kind of circular. So I'm kind of just blending a little bit, maybe, you know, kind of using some colors that are already there just to give my mouth and my like snout area a little bit of shape. Oh, he's looking cute. Super cute. Super cute. Yeah, that's looking good. I'm gonna round this out a little bit more. I 
Nico, how are you doing, Rob? Rounding. That looks good. Yeah. I, I got a little carried away, so my solution was to keep rounding. <laughs> Just keep on going. Keep going. Just exactly. keep going. <laughs> You'll get back to where you started. Yep. Eventually. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to do my eyeballs yet because we still have a chance of it being wet around the eyes. Now, every time I do animals, first of all, they look super funky until the end. So if you're looking at your hedgehog and you're still like, I'm not quite sure about it wait until we put those eyeballs in, it makes a huge difference. The reason why I wait till the very end to put in my eyeballs is because I want them to be nice and sharp and clean lines. I don't want any bleeding or blending because that will change the shape of my eyes. So I like to make sure that everything is totally dry before I do that. So that's why I kind of work back and forth through these different areas because we have to let something dry before we can finish it. So we just did our shadows, we did some mouth, in I'm not gonna work on my nose and my eyes yet because it could still be wet, so I'm gonna go back to my hands. And I'm gonna do kind of more of a pink color with this one. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my sepia and a little bit of my red rose and mix it, that together because the hands themselves don't have that furry like texture like the rest of it. They're kind of more that skin color, which is why they're pink. So I'm just gonna put in my light pink hands they're gonna kind of look like mittens. That's okay. This one kind of has claws, like the little fingers kind of poking out. And then to give it a little bit more depth and shape is the, like the inside of it, like the under part, I'm gonna do a slightly darker color. So it almost looks like a hand like this where you can see the top and you can see underneath. So the underneath part is darker because it's away from the light and the top part is lighter. And it's just a hint. It's just a hint of a little bit of darkness underneath. And so we're like, oh, okay, we're seeing the top and the bottom of the hand at the same time. <laughs> and same thing on the other hand. Oh, just a little bit, just underneath. And that's going to give it a little bit of form, a little bit of like, ah. Somebody asks, do you ever dry your paintings with a blow dryer so you can work on things faster? Yes. Yes, I do. Heat guns are actually better because they're gentler. I don't own one of those and I for sure have used a blow dryer. However, the one thing to keep in mind when you're using a blow dryer is if you have a really heavy, wet painting, if you put a blow dryer on it, it's gonna move that. So I only do it if on like backgrounds where it's okay if it moves. And I'm gonna do like lettering on top. Usually this, I just go get a snack, you know, take a break. Okay. You could use poor quality paper. That would soak up the water really fast. That's a terrible idea. I'm trying to find it. Don't even bother answering that question. Well, like, well, Rob, that brings up a lot of really interesting points. <laughs> right. yeah. and, and the last one we'll have Rob painting with us is, thank you and say goodnight to Rob, everybody. You will never see him again. No, I'm just kidding. That's when the big wood hook comes out in the chair. Just you know, actually with um, like thicker paper like cotton and... Um, like arches or 100% cotton paper that's a heavier weight, it actually absorbs the water really well. So not only was I not funny, but I was totally wrong. You were too. a little wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. So it was the heavier great. paper would have been the better yeah. solution. Yeah. Okay. But it's a great learning experience, which is why sometimes I like working with Canson because the water kind of stays on top of the paper a little bit better so I can blend mm. easier. But the heavyweight paper is super nice. And again, I just want to point out every artist paints with different materials. There's no right or wrong one. I like cheaper paper. That's how I am. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you like really nice thick paper, that's really great too. Don't judge other people by what they're painting with. It's mm. like, who cares? Just as long as they're having a good time. Okay. So I did my hands. You can see I'm not going in and doing strong details. A lot of this is just general information. So we know that it's light and it's dark and we can pull it far away and we know what's going on. That looks good. Yeah, that's looking really nice. I like your brown snout. Can I blend it a little? Is that yeah, okay? Because that's the, the part I'm least pleased with so far. And, but it's still very wet, careful. I think that that's still my biggest problem when it comes to watercolor. It's just way too much water. Yeah, you are really heavy handed with water. So actually maybe going with a thicker paper might be beneficial for you. Because it would soak up the water and let more of the color be on the surface. Mm -hmm. 
but that's up to you. I'm just going to take some of this out. I'm just going to lighten some of it. And sorry if my head is covering. I'm kind of trying looking on top of this paper. Blending out. And then after this dries, I just want to define, mm -hmm. I want to define this lip and this, see how there's like yeah. a definition. Here it's just a little bit lost, but it's just because it's wet. So when it dries, we'll go back in and we'll redefine it. Got it. So stop playing with it. Basically. Stop playing with it. it. If there's an area you don't like, lift color out as much as you can, leave it alone. Okay. Let it dry and then go back to it. Good job. Okay. We are going to do the nose now. So for the nose, I want you to mix a super dark color, which is basically all of our colors combined. So I'm going to take blue. I'm going to take red. I'm going to take violet. I'm going to take my sepia. If you have yellow ochre, but I used all of mine, you can use yellow ochre. And we're going to get a super dark color. And it's not true black. But the benefit of mixing your black as opposed to using straight black is you're going to get hints of color underneath, which just adds more interest and depth to your painting. So taking this super dark black, I'm going to do my little nostrils and I'm using my two. So it's a nice little thin line. And because it's such a small area, it's reading as black anyway. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So I have my two little side nostrils. Uh, Susan says her browns look green. If your browns look green, mix a little red into it. Um, if a color is looking too much like one color and you want to tone it down, use its complement to tone down the color. And the complement of a color is just what's across it on a color wheel. You okay? Okay. So I put in my nostrils. And I'm also going to do the under part of the nose in that same dark color. Now I'm going to add a little bit more blue to mine because I want this black to have kind of a blue undertone. So I add a little more azure in there. So there's the, the shadow of it right underneath. And maybe Susan also said she had trouble getting the super dark color. Um, you might just need more paint to mix and less water. Yeah. Now I would let that dry for a second and then go back over it. it again. Yeah. And just wait a second for it to dry. Yeah. Now I'm going to move on to the mouth. We're not going to finish that nose yet because we want those sections to dry. So for the mouth, I'm just going to do this cute little where these little lips meet. Just a nice little thin black line, just to define it a little bit more. Kind of like an upside down Y. Oh yeah, and if you have black color, like a bottle of black laying around, then grab black if that's easier for you. There's nothing wrong with using straight black from the bottle, so don't feel bad for doing that. Okay, and then I'm just going to take my damp brush. So there's no paint on it. It's just kind of water. I hit it off my paper towel so it's not super wet. And I'm just gonna kind of blend out where that those two lines meet. I just wanna softly blend it out because there's gonna be the lightest little hint of a shadow from the upper lip to the bottom lip because it's on top of it. And that's what I'm putting in here. Just a little hint of a shadow. Just a stroke or two, don't go crazy. Oh, now it's smiling. It's so cute. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the eyes and then we'll go back and finish that nose. So the eyes, same thing. Try and get as dark of a color as you can. If you have straight black, then feel free to use it. I'm going to just mix a super dark color and I'm going to fill in my eyeballs. Now you'll notice that we have two glare spots on our eyeballs. Don't fill those in. You're just going to go along with the shape. And I'm not going to talk a lot during this part because I'm focusing. OK, 
Keenan, I love that you chose to walk across this room during this really quiet moment. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding Keenan you're doing great Keenan thank you thanks for being here I'm not sure if you've worked with this smile coaching abilities or not <laughs> good to know good to know I've got some insider information or not. <laughs> yeah Kimberly says this is not the loose time you're right we are we are detailing in we are doing these tiny because we want these eyes to be nice and sharp. And then do the other one. I like to turn my paper. It's easier for me to paint some way, so feel free to turn it. Now the reason why we are leaving spots on the eyeball is because we wanna show that there's a glare and usually things that are wet have a glare and eyeballs are moist. Don't touch it, don't touch your eyeball, but it's true, they're wet. Which is why if you did our rubber boots tutorial, it had that super strong um, light and that's because it was the texture, that rubbery texture is kind of glossy. Yeah, that was the part I was talking about in that video. Yeah, it was, cool. it was super cool. And you don't think about that when you think of black boots you just think like they're black, but depending on the texture and how the light is hitting on it, that's how you really tell the texture of anything is how that light hits it. So um, it's a super cool little thing. I'm gonna like change the shape. to spread it it would just get kind of messy we're going to wait a second and we're going to move on to the rest of the nose how are you doing rob i went back to the nose a little early but i'm very happy with my eyes your eyes look really great i think your nose is looking good too i think once we finish it off you know, i think it was susie you're helping though uh, at home mm -hmm. when you mentioned that she might have too much water in her tray mm -hmm. and i'm looking at my tray and my tray is always soaked at home too and i'm looking at your tray not that i would be comparing <laughs> Because <laughs> I agree not to compare. Right, right, right. You're but just I'm, observ I'm observing. observing that mm -hmm. your tray is drier than mine as well. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if that's it. I'm always dipping into the bulk of the puddle. Mm -hmm. And you're over here in the dry spot while you're gathering. Yes. Yeah, so for me, when I'm gathering paint on my paintbrush, I'm usually always pulling from the center where I have different mixed colors. I only really pull from the full colors when I'm bringing them in the middle to mix. So the liquid is coming in on your brush to the tray to get it onto mm -hmm. the brush at that point. But mm -hmm. see now, is that too wet in my tray? So that's probably a little bit too that's wet. That's what I thought, okay. So I, that's why I blend it with the Got drier it. areas. And that's gonna make a crisper brush and a mm -hmm. crisper line mm -hmm. there. Yes. And then that's what you put your pat, and then therefore that transfers more paint to the paper. And then when you come back in later with just water, mm -hmm. that's what helps it wash out. Yeah, because okay. you're pulling up a lot of paint for I'm that original to strokes. Too wet of a deep color paint and it's just going everywhere mm -hmm. that's what you're mm -hmm. thank you so much yeah thank you susan at home for helping me susan here. you're so great um yeah and that's again somebody asked about these trays you can just get them on our website let's make art.com they're the best for mixing and these trays even when these colors dry you can still use them you mm -hmm. just bring them back up with water there good to go paint right away so now I'm going to move on to my nose. Now my black has dried and that's kind of what I want. So I'm just gonna use my damp brush. So my brush is mostly clean. I hit it off my paper towel to get rid of that excess water. And then I'm just going to blend some of this color up and fill out the rest of the nose, except I'm gonna leave a little white highlight on the very inside of the black nostril. So just on this, on the very inside of it, I'm gonna leave a little bit of white. There may be an emergency battery switch. Oh, did this die again? No, on this one. <laughs> okay. So we're telling everyone at home right now that we might be without audio for a few minutes. I will just. Not a few minutes, just a few seconds. Just a few seconds. I'm just gonna sit here and look pretty for you. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Man, I 
I'm so cold. Is it water? It's looking good. If it's too much water, you can soak up some water. That would actually be really helpful. <laughs> I just need to get one of those hand warmers. We good? Okay, somebody says that there wasn't, their uh, paint wasn't blending out. Sometimes if you let it dry too much, it doesn't blend even when you add water. Don't stress. What you're gonna do is then, instead of using only water, you're just gonna pick up a little bit of color on your brush and then paint that with that instead of just using the color that's already there. And uh, every time it's different for me, sometimes I waited too long, it doesn't blend out. Sometimes it blends out beautifully, just adjust to it. So just paint with a color instead of using just water. So now we have a nice three dimensional nose because we have highlight, we have shadow, and we have a medium value. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a dark line right across the top of my nose, just to give it a little extra oomph. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. How's your nose turning out? Okay, I think this is looking good, but I think what's going on is the underside lost its shadow a little bit. So what that is doing is it's making the nose appear flat right. instead of pointy. Okay. So let this dry, go back in and put in a darker shadow right underneath where we had that highlight, and that's gonna shape your nose a little bit better. Okay, and I was looking at, well you have it on camera, this yeah. area here, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering, because I felt like it was not quite level, is this area then done if we then darken this up a little bit? Yeah, if we darken this up, and these are all three different levels, which is why it's okay, they're all different values. So this fur is kind of tucked in behind, away from the head, underneath the mouth, so it's okay that it's darker. Mm -hmm. Dad, you need to stop throwing your brushes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but maybe what you can do to help it too is um, we have a nice outline right here and then this is all kind of even valued and we we like it i say we i like it when it's a transition instead of a line and then even so you can just go back in and i'm i'm going to just create more of a transition instead of a hard line mm -hmm. and that's going to give us just more of a realistic yeah. thing of it not just being flat yeah. So, and it's just kind of putting in a medium value. And you can kind of take your paintbrush and move the color where you want it to go if it's damp. So I'm kind of moving the color up yeah. towards it to create more of a shadow. And that just gives it a little extra depth. Oh. Man, my face looks so light now compared. To this one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, what I'm gonna do for mine, because, um, and this is really important as you start to paint more, is your painting is gonna kinda inform you on what to do next. Because I put my face wash in first, right? That was my very first step. But then I built all of this around it, and now my face looks super, super light compared to the rest of my hedgehog. So I kinda want it to feel like it's on the same level, right? In terms of color or in terms of warmth. So I'm just gonna go in, yours is looking good. This all belongs together and yours all belongs together, but my face is like somebody took baby powder and just right in the face. So I'm just gonna go in with a wash, a darker wash, and just do a quick little face wash and kind of darken it up a little bit. And that is why working in layers is so nice, is you can always have the option of going darker. So some of it, I'm just using some of this color. And then of course, I'm gonna have to redo my shadows around my eyes because now they're kind of the same color. So it's just these quick little, it's just small adjustments But that's the great thing is the more you paint, the more you'll be able to step back and be like, what adjustments do I need to make to my hedgehog to make it feel like it's one? 
Okay, now while that dries, I'm gonna quick, just take my damp brush and I'm just gonna do a quick swoop over the glare, the, the glare on like the long glare, cause I wanna tone it down. I want the dots to be really bright, but I want my swoops to be kind of more of a gray. There we go. Yeah. Okay, and then really quick, I'm gonna go back in and put in my shadows around the eyes. You might not have to. Rob, is your nose dry? Can you put in that shadow around? It's just dry. It's still too wet? No, I tried to, I, I added Let a little, see. but maybe not enough. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the side. I'm gonna take out this highlight right here, if that's okay. I just did it, sorry, I didn't ask you. Yeah, I would, I was Because it was just read, it was just reading a little too, uh, too much, too a little solid. too, too, yeah, it was almost distracting. It, well, I noticed it's actually the only place I actually managed to leave any white. <laughs> and I just took it out. <laughs> yeah. So well, sorry no, about no, that. I've got these little teeny spots up here. You can still get those if you want. There's one white spot there in the fur. No, but, and, and, and I'll just aside, it did seem like it was too animated, too much of a mm -hmm. cartoon uh, and I guess my keep focusing on the over exaggerated smile I created there. There we go. So a little bit of shadow underneath points it. And it popped out the white. To it popped out the white and we're going to just redo your little mouth line really quick. Just a quick little boop. Oh, now it was, it was too fat in there. Too thick. Of a there line. we go. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Amelia, asked, Amelia asked what I do with my paintings when I'm done. You have no idea how many paintings are in a drawer in my desk. I literally have four drawers that are just probably about this thick of paintings. And that's because I, I mainly do illustrations and prints. So I paint something and then I scan it and I edit it. And then I will sell prints of it or I'll make it for this. And so the originals just kind of hang out in my desk drawer. I don't have any hanging up at all. I probably should, but... That's what I do with mine. It's kind of sad. What about in the retail shop? Which you should start framing the originals and putting them up in the brick I, I really should. That would be cool. That would be cool. Okay, I'm just putting in a little bit of fur texture here. Now this is, okay, now this is detail spot. Detail, we're on the very last step. This is where you take a look at your hedgehog and you're like, where can I maybe work on some spaces? What can I do to kind of really bring this up? And then another thing I'm going to do in the detail area is I'm gonna take my two and I'm gonna do a little bit of these spiky furry lines, just kind of here and there on my hedgehog. Now you don't wanna do the entire thing. If you do the entire thing, it's gonna flatten all the form that we've made. So it's just kind of, I'm doing a few kind of around the eyeball. I'm gonna do some in the middle of the forehead. I'm gonna do some kind of here and there but it's just little hints. Just like that. Just a little here and there. You don't wanna to go too crazy though, so calm down if you're going crazy. Yeah, very nice. The other thing you wanna be aware of with your shadow is you don't want it as, like a a strong angle going this way because then your hedgehog will look mad. So if your hedge, if you have like a strong thing, then you're gonna wanna bring it more like that and open that up and that's gonna make it seem less like it's doing this. Just last minute kind of play. But if you're done with yours and you feel good about it, then stop. Don't do, don't keep going if you're you're done just because I'm still going. There, now my hedgehog looks more a part of a thing. I'm done. I feel good. Do you feel good? How's your fur? Now we get to name it. We get to name our hedgehog. Now whiskers when it's dry. Oh, whiskers, thank you. I okay. I'm sure if we had dry, dry. Uh, it needs to be totally dry to do whiskers. I'm going to do them. You don't have to do them. I'm going to use that same black that we use for the eye, which is a really muddy brown, pretty much. Okay, so I, I have my paintbrush. 
I have this dark color. Can I steal some of your yeah. yellow ochre? Thanks. Okay, now when you do whiskers, I like to, to get a nice point on my brush, I just swoop back and forth on my palette so it pinches my bristles together and to a nice thin line. And then coming off from like the mouth lip, I'm gonna just do a quick little So they're barely there, wispy lines. This is really hard to do. So if you don't wanna do it, don't do it. And the little claws on, the, on my hand, I just kind of left white. I'm not worried about those. If they're bothering you though, then just like blend a wash over them. Because claws are like white, but they're not like white, white. So you're just gonna do a couple little whiskers. Yes! Yes, that looks great. Okay, now um, this is the part where we hold up our paintings so you guys can see them. And the best part about looking at other people's artwork is not to compare it with your own, but to appreciate what they've done in theirs because everybody brings something to the texture. I love the warm color of Lynn's. I love all of the different values in Rob's and I love his spiky hair at the top. So everybody, <laughs> everybody has something that they're, they're bringing to the table. So it's just great to see how other people approach it. I named my hedgehog Toby. This is Toby. That's Toby? Yeah, okay, hold it up. Look at Keenan. We'll hold it up. Rob, what's yours? I'm naming him after your dog who I met yesterday, Harvey. You've painted that. I want to see it. Everybody really wants to see it and love to see what you would name your cute little hedgehog. If you're on Instagram, you can tag us. Let's go make art. I have, I have a sad thought. Yeah. Uh, due to our mics being professionally set up today, yeah. uh, they couldn't hear what you named your hedgehogs because the shot that was in that was showing was not what the <laughs> mic was hooked up to. Wait, so they didn't see what we named ours? They saw, but they didn't hear. Okay, this is Toby. Toby. This is Larry. Are we doing overhead, or should I hold? Straight oh, the front. sorry, Don. Larry. Larry. <laughs> Rob, Harvey. he wrote it. Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, they look so good. Um, so again, share it. We want to see it. I know it's so scary putting your art out there because you're afraid that people are going to judge it. First of all, nobody does. Second of all, if they do, you don't need those people in your life. Third of all, I want to see it. Your mom wants to see it. Your niece wants to see it. Everybody wants to see it. It's so great when somebody paints. So again, our Instagram name is Let's Go Make Art. Our Facebook is the same. You can post it there in the comments of this video is a great way to place to put it. Also, we have an amazing Facebook group that's very supportive and um, just a lot of really great ideas. So that's Let's Make Art Together if you wanted to join that. It's a lot of fun. I peek in when I can and comment when I can. And uh, next week, we're going into Jan to December. We're doing, let me, let me get our project. I don't you. <laughs> You're like January. <laughs> okay, our first project is our December florals. So we have that cranberry pine color going on that, you know, mm -hmm. that holiday feel. So this is a lot of fun. The tutorial for this will be released tomorrow. Also, um, just to give you guys a heads up, Christmas week, we are not going to have a live because it's on Christmas, I think, or Christmas Eve. Christmas is on Tuesday. Christmas is on Tuesday. Gonna I'm not gonna be here. So um, that's just gonna be a pre-recorded tutorial for that week. And we're gonna do a live at Friday at noon, Central Standard Time to do our Let's Make Art Matter postcard. So I'll be posting more information about that tomorrow. And we're working so hard getting, shipping your orders out. We, we really are. I'm probably actually gonna go back to the office and do some more of that tonight. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for just being amazing and so supportive. And that's it. Bye, you guys. Rock on. Bye. Bye.